Thank God this pay-per-view was on a Saturday night. Let's hope WWE does more of this in the future. Less Sunday night pay-per-views, more Saturday night pay-per-views. I can at least be thankful for that. But outside of that, I don't know that there's a ton to be thankful for when it comes to the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. Yikes. Like, I even start off with the pre-show. Their panel. This is supposed to be sports entertainment. Why is your pre-show panel so goddamn boring? You should be patterning it as something like the NBA on TV TNT studio show with Chuck and Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaq and Ernie Johnson and... This shit doesn't even measure up to the standard of the snooze fest that's the NFL on CBS's studio show. You're supposed to be sports entertainment. Act like it. Get Booker T, R-Truth, Pat McAfee, some chick. I don't mean that too derogatory here, mind you, but I'm just the point. That way you bounce it out a little bit. Do Caleb Baxter, Baxter whatever. And stop trying to overly script this shit and just let them guys go. It could be one of the best parts of their pro presentation, and instead it's one of their worst. And that's saying something. Just a random gripe, but god damn. Like, this is supposed to be entertainment. It is. And it's ironic. When you look at this year's Royal Rumble, wrestling is supposed to be entertainment, but wrestling is also supposed to tell stories. And the one thing you can't say about this show is that the WWE failed to tell stories. They told several stories throughout the course of the night. They absolutely did. For those that are griping and saying, oh, they focused on telling stories instead of making the matches good. Well, that's the fucking name of the game. We're bitching about them telling stories. The problem is, is what those stories entail. The problem is the execution of those stories. The problem is what those stories represent and how they speak to much bigger flaws that have been present for a long time now with WWE. And for those fans that are sitting there and getting really upset by this show or really bothered by this show, I mean, I just got to call it the way I see it. If you're surprised in 2022 that WWE crapped the bed with the Royal Rumble, if you're surprised that they put on a lackluster show, at this point, you got to realize you're pretty stupid. Really stupid. And if you're going to be bothered by the fact that I'm calling you stupid, even though you absolutely are, I would ask you this question. The WWE has been insulting your intelligence with their product for the better part of almost two decades now. Why all of a sudden does somebody insulting your intelligence bother you? I mean, good God. Anyways, let's talk about this show. Universal Championship match. You started off with a good one. Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. Seth Rollins playing the Shield theme was some good type of troll stuff. Although you could just see Roman saying as that music was playing, they had this jerk beat Brock Lesnar twice, to which I say, I'm with you, Roman. But this match was really good. Chemistry between these two, obviously also really good. Story told all throughout the entire match. Like, the only thing to me that would have made this better was if you actually would have had Dean Ambrose show up in the middle of it at some point. That would have been the only thing I probably could have taken this individual match to another level. And I know a lot of you hated the finish, but I didn't. I mean, clearly Little Nate, Charles Robinson, was in cahoots with Seth Rollins the entire time. So Roman had to make sure that he didn't let that egregious injustice stand. Now, was I big of a fan of the ref basically putting Seth Rollins' hand on the ropes? No. If you want to crap on that, that's fine. But the whole, I like the DQ finish, I mean, not every finish needs to be clean either. The post-match beatdown from Roman was top stuff, especially the chair shot reminiscent of the chair shot by Seth Rollins a few years ago when he turned on his shield brethren. Like, I really actually enjoyed this. They actually told the story here, and I liked it. And then the rest of the show happened. The Women's Royal Rumble match. Did WWE care about anything other than Ronda Rousey and trying to pop 
cheap pops by bringing back a bunch of names from the past. I mean, Molly Holly looked great. Ivory looked fucking amazing, all 60 plus years old of her. And the ironic thing is, is I think her right to censor kind of cancel culture gimmick works just as well today as it did two decades ago. And I wish they would actually utilize her more because that shit can work splendidly. You had Michelle McCool basically saying, if no one I'm eliminating, then I'm not participating. You just had to know she was going to get to at least one elimination. Mickey James, the Impact Women's Champion. It was cool to see her. It was cool to see the WWE allow this to happen because they needed it. Um, but it was also cool in the fact that they didn't immediately dog her out. And they didn't have somebody from the active roster eliminator. They had a legend like Lita eliminator. So it's not so bad. But the biggest gripe here is this match was pretty bad in general. And of course, they had Bianca go over 45 minutes just to unceremoniously get interrupted. Just so that way you could have the fucking SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte be in the final two with her overpushed forced plastic flat ass. Stupid. So Ronda wins. Yay. And of course, instead of going where the story actually should be, which is Ronda versus Becky. Now Vince is setting the table for a story that only he wants to see. And that is Charlotte versus Ronda. Like it's just bad. This was bad. They had Bianca go for ever, but she really didn't get much of a shine here. You know, Ronda came back and I don't know what to make of her ring gear. You know, some of her punches look Shane McMahon quality. Like, they were work punched as they were bad punches. Um, but she wins. I don't have that much beef, honestly, with Ronda Rousey, win Rousey winning. Because, I mean, honestly, other than the Bianca Redemption arc to go get Becky Lynch, which you don't have to do with the Rumble, like, you needed something in this Rumble match, and you needed something for your women's division, and Ronda Rousey represented something for both of that. We could beef about how the Bianca shit was booked and how that was handled and how she was basically cast aside because she had just had to sit there and overforce and push Charlotte's plastic flat ass again. Well, it doesn't mean that Ronda winning was a bad thing. Ronda winning was a necessity that speaks to much bigger underlying problems, obviously. The Raw Women's Championship match, did anybody really care about Dewdrop and Becky Lynch? The best thing I could say is you had a manhandle slam for the second rope, and that's all I care to talk about. i got to cut time in this review, and that's where I'm choosing to cut it. They probably, frankly could have cut this match from the damn pay-per-view, especially if Becky Lynch wasn't going to have any interaction with Bianca, especially if you weren't going to go there. This is not good. The WWE Championship match, I think, is kind of like a split story here. People were really amped up to see Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar, as was I. It is absolutely a shame that this couldn't have waited until goddamn WrestleMania, but here we are. I, Lashley had to win this one. Whether it was clean, whether it was not clean, didn't matter. You needed to put the strap back on Lashley. You needed to do it in some type of way that led you to have an opportunity to say you could have a return match between the two of them, and you did that here. The Roman Heyman twist was well done, even if you could see it coming. It was absolutely well done. Like, there's a difference in terms of the way that was executed, and then you kind of ask this question of, well, that in and of itself tells a story, and that was well executed, but is it the right story to tell? And here's what I say, is that I totally understand on the surface maybe why you're going this direction. But at the same point in time, it's actually kind of dumb. Well, on the one hand, not only is Roman Reigns the tribal chief, the head of the table, the needle mover, he is also apparently the fucking puppet master. I would say, are you wanting to pull these strings? Brock Lesnar's doing his own thing on an entirely different show. Why would Roman Reigns be worried about him at this point? Why wouldn't he stay in his own lane? Why wouldn't he focus on his own thing? Why would he sit there and create a situation where now Brock Lesnar wants to come back after him? Just really, really odd to me. Why would he give two shits about Brock now? Well, apparently because, well, put ourselves into a pickle, and by God, we got to get back to Brock and Roman. We'll solve that later tonight. Yeah. So those of you that wanted 
Lashley and Lesnar to be about Lashley and Lesnar. At the end of the day, it wasn't. But Bobby Lashley is once again WWE champion, and we have absolutely no fucking clue who he'll be, who'll be facing at WrestleMania. Yeehaw. The mixed tag match with Edge and Beth Phoenix versus Miz and Maurice was actually pretty good. Props to Beth Phoenix for the Luna Vachon look. Um, this match was good. My only honest beef with it, like all of them did good shit in this match. I just didn't need it here. The timing of when you chose to have this match feels, feels off to me. Personally, I would have much rather had this be a WrestleMania match on one of those two nights. This plays better there. I don't think it was a great fit for the Royal Rumble, in my opinion. But honestly, you look at a lot of what happened on Saturday night's Royal Rumble show and you wonder how much of that was even really a good fit for the Royal Rumble. And then, of course, you get to the men's Royal Rumble match. This is what you're closing the show out with. And by the time you get here, of course, it's already 11 p.m. Eastern, so you're like three hours into the show, and we still got a fucking Rumble match to go. How the hell does this happen? Time management is critical. Priorities, Vincent. Priorities. Get in, get your shit done, and get the fuck out of Dodge. Could have cut this goddamn Royal Rumble in half as far as I'm concerned. You can tell the finish was rushed. But here's the way I recap this men's Royal Rumble. Johnny Knoxville came in, and that was cool. Legit cool. You had a botched Kofi Kingston spot, where he was trying to jump and hold on to the, you know, the padded wall outside the ring, and both of his feet touched. So that fucking let the air out of the balloon a little bit. Drew McIntyre returned, and he was in good form here. Big E was dumped unceremoniously, so any of you that thought that maybe this company would do right by Big E, you found out exactly what they thought about Big E in the way and method in which he was really a non-factor in this Rumble match and was kind of just dumped unceremoniously in the middle of the match. Bad Bunny came, and this was a pleasant surprise at 27. He was badass again. I don't give a shit. He's got tours where he's booked for both days. Cancel them bitches. Find a way to bring him back for another Mania storyline and get him into a damn Mania match. Bad Bunny is good shit and I'll always stand for this dude in a WWE ring. And I always will beef at WWE because you could have had Broke Baron Corbin with his bum ass sitting there selling his kidney or doing whatever the fuck he needed to do. Getting lucky however he wanted to do it. You could have had Broke Baron Corbin be... Entrant number 30 in this Royal Rumble and the roof off of the arena or the stadium in St. Louis would have come off. Instead of having somebody that could have been a legit top babyface that got almost universal, unanimous appeal and universal, unanimous support, he comes out as this troll, stupid ass, happy Corbin character and nobody gives a fuck. Shane McMahon is back. I'm curious to see what his WrestleMania storyline is going to be. Is it going to be Austin Theory? Is that what it's going to be? Now, some of you are probably raging because you had him eliminate Kevin Owens. And yeah, I kind of understand where you're going with that. Is it really going to be Austin Theory? Is Shane McMahon actually going to win a match at Mania this year? I don't know. And then, of course, you just randomly have Brock Lesnar show up at number 30, and he comes out and he wins. Now, if you couldn't see this coming, I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. But of course Brock, losing the match early in the night, just gets to come out at number 30 for the fuck all of it. No justification for it, no explanation for it, just is what it is. And yeah, the finish was certainly rushed. It didn't take long. Got rid of the past few people like you had Randy Orton was there and the St. Louis crowd was certainly behind him and he ain't winning in his hometown. Fuck that, Vince says. We make movies, pal! That's a such god shot. And then, of course, when all is said and done, what happens? Brock Lesnar wins the Royal Rumble. We can all see where this is fucking going. And he sells out by pointing to the WrestleMania sign, which is what you want to believe. But the reality is, is Brock was just doing right. He was letting the local fire officials know that, hey, that sign's on fire again. So think about this. The Rumble 
probably had large segments of the audience that were evacuated, I would imagine, because the fucking sign was on fire multiple times throughout the night. You basically burned the Men's Royal Rumble just to give Brock Lesnar a shot at Roman Reigns, which he had a few goddamn weeks ago that you didn't necessarily need to go away from. You burn the goddamn Women's Royal Rumble just to set up the wrong story involving Ronda Rousey and that Charlotte Flair. You unceremoniously eliminated Bianca Belair just to make that fucking happen. You had a Raw Women's Championship match that nobody at no point in time felt that Dewdrop was any real threat to Becky Lynch. You had a mixed tag match with Edge and Miz and Maurice and Beth Phoenix that was very good, surprisingly good, and absolutely didn't need to happen on this goddamn show. You had a DQ finish that the actual finish and the way it was executed initially of the match looked incredibly stupid. While I liked it, it was incredibly stupid. There was not one thing you could really truly hang your hat on with this show and say, Now oh, this was such good shot. I mean, yes, they told stories throughout the night. And that is something I often criticize this company and their lack of ability to do or their lack of desire to do anymore. They just randomly throw shit out there and hope that it sticks. They've lost the art of telling stories. Well, here on this show, they absolutely told stories. But what does it represent? Your two Rumble winners, of course, they're Ronda Rousey and Brock Lesnar. And you're almost at a point where you can't even criticize that that much because who the fuck else was it legitimately going to be? This is where you see the manifestation and the representation of the damage that's been done over the past decade. Too few legit, credible challengers. Like even in the Women's Royal Rumble, you have Sasha Banks start off first. And you got her and Melina going one-two and sitting there basically showing with their splits who does the better Batista bomb. And the answer is Melina, of course. But she's quickly eliminated. You don't even get like a showdown between her and freaking Bianca Belair. You'd have thought you would have tried to work that in at some point. Like So many things about this were just a really bad miss. I mean, legitimately, you should have been building up bum-ass Broke Baron Corbin for almost a year in this spot. He could have won the Royal Rumble and it would have went over swimmingly. You could have been spending the past year building up Braun Breaker and doing everything you could to have him come out and win the Royal Rumble and have him go on to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Isn't it telling that not a single NXT talent, I think both men's and women's Rumble, were actually in this, in these matches. Not a single one, am I right? I believe that to be the case. Boy, if that isn't an indictment against NXT and how Vince views it and the talent there. And this, this show just lost the plot in a lot of different ways. And you see so few people actually defending it. Like... It is really hard to get universal alignment on perception, whether that be WWE product, AEW product. You're always going to have people that praise it, people that are kind of middle of the road on it, people that shit on it. With this show, you're seeing almost no praise, like credible, real praise of this Royal Rumble show. You're even seeing very little middle of the road. It is mostly almost universal condemnation for this shit show. And you know what? I can't blame you. Because most of my enjoyment on this show came from just how bad so many things involving it were. You just basically wasted the whole Men's Royal Rumble just to give Brock the title shot that he already had previously with Roman that you didn't fucking need to get rid of. You could have went right back to. You didn't have to waste the Rumble match to get there, but you did. You could have even sat there and gotten away with not having Ronda Rousey win the Rumble if you so desire, and you still could have went with her and Charlotte Flair. There were so many other things you could have done, but I forgot Vince McMahon says, We're make movies, pal! And this was one of them straight-to-DVD jokers that you bury in the background and you never think about again. And for those that are saying this is the worst Royal Rumble since 2015, just because Roman won that one and the crowd was booing in Philly, the fuck? fuck is wrong with you? This shit 
was infinitely worse on Saturday night. Period.